Hi, this is Elle, and we're reading Frederick Douglass by Frank Murphy and illustrated by Nicole Tadgell. This is the story of how Frederick Douglass, who was once an enslaved person, helped outlaw slavery in America. In the early 1600s, some white people brought kidnapped people from many African countries and brought them to America. It was cruel. These white people sold the Africans to work for other people. They treated them as property and did not pay them for their work. This is called slavery. Frederick Douglass's mother, Harriet Bailey, was born into slavery. I met Frederick was born into slavery too. The people who owned Frederick did not tell him his exact birth date. Frederick thought he was born sometime in 1817. Many slaveholders did not care enough to keep enslaved families together. Frederick did not live with his mother. He only got to see her a few times in his life. One day, Frederick was being unfairly punished by a woman who was enslaved too. He was not allowed to eat. Frederick's mother arrived. She had walked 12 miles to see him. She was bringing him a cake shaped like a heart that she had made for him. When she saw what this woman was doing to her son, she was very angry. She told the woman to never punish him like that again. Enslaved people were not supposed to learn to read and write, but the wife of Frederick's slaveholder taught Frederick the alphabet. She began teaching him to read. She stopped the lessons as soon as her husband found out. He and some other slaveholders were afraid that if black people did learn, they would have the tools to resist being enslaved. But Frederick found other ways to learn. He gave bread to poor white children he met when he went on errands. They gave Frederick reading lessons in return. At a shipyard, Frederick watched shipbuilders write, writing on wood. Then he used the chalk to copy what they wrote. By the time Frederick was 16, he had grown strong and tall. His mind had grown strong too. Frederick's slaveholder was worried that he would learn too much, so he sent Frederick to work for a different man. The man was paid to teach Frederick a lesson, that he was a slave and nothing more. This man beat Frederick many times. One day, Frederick made a brave but risky choice. When the man beat him, Frederick fought back and won. After that, this slaveholder would never lay a hand on him again. Frederick kept reading. The more he read, the more he learned. He knew that white people were not better than black people. He knew that all people should be treated equally. He knew that people should not be enslaved. Years later, Frederick was able to escape more to a state where slavery was against the law. He had met a free woman named Anna Marie. She was a housekeeper. She helped him escape. She snuck the sailor's uniform from her laundry pile so Frederick could wear it as a disguise. The disguise and some documents allowed him to escape. Twelve years later, Frederick married Anna. In New York, Frederick met people who wanted to abolish slavery. These people were called abolishness. Abolish means to end. Frederick told the abolitionists his story. The abolitionists asked Frederick to give speeches about his life. He was a powerful speaker. They knew that he couldn't help others realize that slavery was wrong. 
Soon, Frederick was given speeches to thousands of people. Frederick wrote a book. It described what he went through as an enslaved person and his triumphs in the fight for freedom. It's called Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. People all over the country and across the world read it. Because of Frederick's book and the speeches he gave, more people began to understand that slavery was wrong. Frederick and Anna had five children. Anna and the children helped Frederick fight against slavery. Their home in Rochester, New York, was a station on the Underground Railroad. This was not an actual railroad. It was the name of a network people use and safe houses. On the route north to freedom, these brave people helped the enslaved escape. Four of Frederick's children helped him publish an anti-slavery newspaper. It was called the North Star. Lewis, Fre Lewis and Frederick Jr. helped print the newspapers. Rosetta folded them. Charles delivered them. The Civil War started in 1861. Most people from the North were fighting to end slavery. Most people from the South were fighting to keep it. Frederick wrote articles and gave speeches inspiring black men to become soldiers. He even met with President Abraham Lincoln to convince him that black soldiers should be treated the same as white soldiers. Soon, many more black men were fighting for, no for the North over the next four years. 200,000 black soldiers helped the North win the war and preserve the United States. Two of these soldiers were Frederick's sons, Charles and Lewis. After the enslaved people were freed, Frederick argued that black men should be given the right to vote. He helped convince President Ulysses S. Grant's Congress amended the Constitution to make it a law. Frederick made history in lots of ways, but not many people know about this. When Frederick was a grown man, he decided to choose a birthday for himself. Frederick's mother, Frederick thought about his mother. He remembered that day she came to his rescue. It was in February. He remembered the heart-shaped cake she had made for him. Frederick decided to honor that memory of his mother and the love she showed for him. He chose February 14th as his official birthday, Valentine's Day.